Welcome back to our fixer upper. So today I'm going to work on the big problem with the outside wall that's close to the chimney. Um, last night I was able to get some help and get the windows closed up here on the second story. Um, these casement windows, the hinges in the bottom are bent and we were unable to close them because they were all sticking out on the sides. Had somebody push from the outside, we were able to latch them. And then this one over here, um, because of the way it's been, and actually the window itself has been left to rot for a very long time. We just got it closed as best we could and then duct taped it shut from the inside and the outside. So that's going to be okay for the winter. And then come spring, I'm going to work on replacing those windows and getting the, hopefully some of them repaired. So the big problem we have, however, is that here on this outside wall, um, at some point a previous owner had found, obviously, some massive mold and water damage on this wall. Now this is uh, the outside wall, that is the chimney you see behind it. That chimney is actually a facade. There's no real block to that chimney. And what was happening was, is the roof was leaking right where the chimney meets the roof. And that leak was running right down this wall. We've got a whole bunch of wallboard on the outside, the siding, that needs to be replaced. Uh, it's in really bad condition. And we've got some of the 2x6s that are also in bad condition and will need to be replaced. And if you notice, all the insulation is missing, which means that a previous owner found the problem, pulled out the moldy insulation, and then just threw a drywall up right on an outside wall with no insulation in place. You can see there where the insulation used to be. Uh, we did thankfully caught this during the purchase and made the, uh, the selling agent allow us to open up a hole to confirm that it was repaired as it was stated it was, and it was not. So. Um, we got some compensation during the sale so that we can fix this. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to rip this apart so that I can get in there, check for any serious major damage, and then temporarily throw some insulation on that wall so we can use it and move in, at least for the winter. And then in spring we're going to pull that chimney down and we're going to fix this outside wall and then rebuild the chimney. That chimney facade also has a sewer vent as well as the furnace vent um, in the fireplace flue which you can see right there. This one came out rather easy, just for anybody watching that wants to know how a bifold door works. There's an adjustment screw on the bottom um, that you screw in and out <coughs> to tighten the door. In this case, I had to screw it in so the door would have enough play to come up out of the door frame. So when I started this channel, I kind of asked myself, what was my main goal? And my main goal is not only to educate those of you watching, not so much on the, the right way to do things, because as I said before, I'm not a professional, um, but just that you can do things. Um, everyone has the skills to do pretty much all of this, just people are afraid to step in and dig into it. Um, one of the biggest things for me is that I'm doing this for my grandkids. I only have one at the moment, but I'm sure I'll have more. But 
I understand that won't be around forever. And I want them to be able to see a little bit of who I was and what I do and have that connection. So if I'm gone before they come along, at least they'll know a little bit about me. So before I can continue, I'm going to get this shelf out. Two by fours or sixteen inches apart. So if you ever need to pry against something like drywall, just measure out where you know there's a stud, and you can pry. I'm not concerned about that drywall. I'm probably gonna have to replace all of it. I could patch some of it, but it's all gonna come down so I can see exactly what's on this wall behind this covered up mess. Dusty there.
there you have it. That is what was hidden behind that wall. No insulation, looks like wall. The box seals completely run it through. But it looks like it may end there. Continue working on this wall. I have got it completely exposed and pretty confident of what we need to do now. I've got to replace several of the main 2x6 supports. The wall has some severe damage, water damage, some serious rot on the sheeting. Um, this 2x4 you see right here is part of the chimney wall. And the rot extends all the way down through into the box sill. So I'm going to cut out this box sill, all the bad section here. I'm going to remove these 2x6s. I'm going to replace one of the header boards that you see here, the worst one. Um, the top one I think I'm going to leave alone. Um, we're going to cut out the bottom one and we're going to replace it to give us our strength back. And then we're going to add sheeting onto it. I picked up some sheeting and unfortunately this is the outside wall and the chimney is behind it and we don't have time to take this chimney down for the winter but I want to get this closed up for the winter. Um, it is already snowing outside. It just started snowing today in fact. Got some uh, snow on the neighbors cars out there, snow on the lawn. So we've got a time crunch and I've got some ideas of how to get the sheeting up and hopefully that will work. And we'll walk you through that process. But for right now, we'll do some cleanup. We'll get the sawzall out. We'll cut out that box sill, cut out the header board, cut out the two by sixes and get those all replaced. So normally you'd have to build a support wall, just a temporary one when you take out any of the outside wall like this because all the all the rafters are sitting on top of that top header plate but fortunately for me somebody's already done that in the form of a closet so we've got this closet wall here supporting those rafters uh, it doesn't need a whole lot of support it's going to be held together all by itself plus i'm leaving the top header plate so i think we're going to be okay put new insulation in i'm pulling this piece of insulation out too there is some mold left on that uh, didn't get removed when whoever it was pulled the insulation out and then put drywall over a bare wall with no insulation on it, a bare outside wall. So uh, that was uh, kind of disappointing to see that, to see that anyone would do that. But we do have a uh, little bit of mold left in the bottom of this that I just want to get that pulled out. I've got some R19 to put in its place. Uh, R19 is for 2x6 walls. So let's get to it. And right here is why we're taking those out. Completely rotted on the outside. problems. The bottom half isn't that bad though. I might be able to use some of that. more of this exposed. You can see the rot here. 
we're going to cut out this plywood section here. Remove this. Remove this. And then we still need to do this box sill in the upper. Now I think I can get away with just replacing this section here. This looks good there. And then this section from here all the way over to there. Now that one piece I pulled out looks pretty good in the bottom. I can use that rather than a brand new full piece. This one here oddly um, looks pretty okay. I may not even pull that out. I'll have to cut off the bottom or cut it loose rather from the box sill but I can leave it just dangle there. Then I'll have to make a cut down through this. I should be able to do most of it with a circular saw. We'll get a straight line on it. And I'm a little concerned about that outer chimney wall. It's kind of dark in there. This is still strong here, so I may just replace a, a section like this section here rather than the whole piece. Perhaps cut it from here up. You can feel the and see the punkiness right there, and then it's solid after that. So I'll cut from here up or possibly just attach a piece of plywood right to the face of that to strengthen that.